Okay, we are live. As I film this, today is actually Tuesday, February 13th. So that means tomorrow is Valentine's Day. And I'm going to show you something I'm getting ready. But first I'll show you this dog just because she happens to be here. This is Mocha. She is going in two days, I believe, to get a haircut. So she is going to stop being quite so furry very soon. And now she's going to lie down and be quiet and not bother us while we learn some math. What are we learning in math? We are learning interest. Simple interest and compound interest. That's it for the whole lesson. And it's going to be fun. We're going to do a bunch of examples. Lie down. All the way down. Yeah, that's right. Stay. Okay. But what I'm doing for tomorrow, oh, this is the uh, PSV. That is a team in the Dutch league. And it's cold out. I don't want to talk about the weather. And there's nothing else to talk about except I made a miniature charcuterie board with little rubber feet on the bottom out of a wood that's called Purple Heart. It is actually purple, this wood. A lot of people can't believe it. They say, what? There's wood that's purple? It's from South America. It's hard as rock. Really not fun to work with, but I managed to cut out this heart shape. And it's just a mini charcuterie board because I'm doing it kind of as a joke. And to put on it, I have a bunch of little Valentine'sy things. These are cinnamon hearts, but I also have gummy hearts and sour gummy things. So that's going to surprise somebody tomorrow morning. I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be fun. Now, to get into the math, we're going to do simple interest and compound interest. Where is my clipboard? Where are the pages that go on the clipboard? I hope I have made enough examples, but we'll see. One of the reasons I make the video is to figure out whether I have enough examples for an hour long class. So let's start with a very simple, simple interest problem. We're not doing compound interest yet, but we will get to it. Okay. So what if you were to invest a hundred dollars at 5% interest for one year? Well, what you have to do is you have to apply this simple little formula, which is principal, that's the hundred dollars times rate. That's the interest rate. That's the 5% times time, which is the one year. So time is in years with this formula. The rate is 5%, but we want to convert that into a decimal. So people I know who know how to convert between decimal and percent realize that 5% is going to be 0 0.05. So we'll do that quickly because I know the students are good at it. And the hundred dollars doesn't have to be converted. We will just call it a hundred dollars. But the thing about the simple interest formula is it calculates the interest. We're going to figure out how much interest that amount will earn at the end of the year at that interest rate. So in order to know how much money we have at the end, that's why we have this extra little super even easier formula. A, which is the final amount is equal to the principal plus the interest. So it's going to be the hundred dollar principal plus whatever interest we figure out uh, by doing this formula. So let's go ahead and do it. This is not going to be hard. Students won't find it hard, but it puts us in a position to ask all sorts of good what if questions. So far, so good. Okay, so applying the formula, the interest will be principal, that's 100, times the interest rate, which is 5%, but I am going to write 0 0.05. And we get really good at converting these into decimal when we use this formula. For one year, we're multiplying it by one, which of course is not a very difficult multiplication to do. So 100 times 0 0.05 times one, and yes, of course, use your calculator as you need it, but I'm starting with really simple examples because I want us to be able to do at least some of it in our heads so that we feel comfortable with it. And then we'll move on with, with the what if questions. We'll move on to see, well, how does it look when this happens, when that happens, when the numbers are not quite so clean and simple. And we realize that it's still easy to use. 100 times 0 0.05 is equal to five. And five times one is five. So the answer is five. 
but five what? It's five dollars. So I can put a dollar sign and I'll write it like this. But that is not how much money we have. So that's where we want to apply this other little formula. So the final amount is equal to the principal, which is the hundred, plus the interest, which is the five. And therefore, $105 is how much we have at the end. Makes sense, doesn't it? I had $100. I invested it for a year at 5%. And now I have $105. I can make money if I do this. Useful. Let's do a whole bunch of other examples before we start working on compound interest. So I'm going to get into some of these pretty quickly. And it's the what if style that I'm applying. So, okay, what if it's not one year? What if it's two years? Let's do that one. We'll only change one thing. We'll change only the number of years to two. We know that's not going to make it very much more difficult. But it starts giving us a feeling for how the numbers change. So, $100, still 5% interest, but now it's two years. The formula gives us 100 times 0 0.05 times 2. 100 times 0 0.05 is still going to be equal to 5, and 5 times 2 is 10. So we have $10. And then, of course, when we add that to the principal, I'm not always going to write this formula. I'll just say, oh, okay, well, therefore, 100 plus the $10 is equal to $110. And I don't think any of the students are going to be surprised to see this is what happened. Okay, so we, had, we invested $100 at 5%. In the first year, it made $5. In the second year, it made $5 again. So at the, end of, at the end of two years, we now have $110. It makes sense. So let's do a few more. Because they're making sense, we will do a bunch of them, practice, feel comfortable. So, not changing very much. What if it's, oh, I'm changing something though. What if it's $100, still $100? 5% interest, I'm keeping that the same as well, for three months. Three months. That's not a full year. We have, principal is 100, 5% is still 0 0.05. But three months, the best way to do this is to say, well, that's three out of 12. Three twelfths of the year, because there are 12 months in the year. So that's actually not too hard to remember. But of course, we can convert this fraction. We can reduce the fraction. Three twelfths reduces to a quarter. But we can also convert it to a decimal, which is a quarter, 0 0.25. So this quickly becomes 100 times 0 0.05 times 0 0.25. 100 times 0 0.05 is still 5, but 5 times 0.25 is going to be 1.25, isn't it? $1.25. Does that make sense? Yes. Because remember, we were investing $100 at 5% for a whole year, and we made $5 in interest. Well, this is only three months. It's only a quarter of the year, so we only made a quarter of $5. We only made $1.25. Then when we add that to our principal, which I can show this way if I want, we end up with $101.25. But that was only after three months, so we're not surprised that the amount is smaller. So when you have an, a time that's not a whole number of years, we can still do that. Simply by converting the months with this approach into... A decimal, a fraction of a year, fraction of a year or decimal version of the same number, and it works out fine. And of course, we can use our calculator as we wish to do this. I wanted to introduce that because sometimes that happens and I don't want the students to get confused. Okay, another one. Okay, well, if we can handle three months, we can handle <clears throat> another sort of challenging different time. So I'm going to keep the hundred dollars, I'm going to keep five percent. But instead of three months with this next example, it's going to be ooh, two years and nine months. I'm running out of chalk in this one. So let's grab a different one. Two years, nine months. Okay. Two years and nine months. 
So we have the same calculation. The interest is equal to 100 times the, uh, the rate, which is 0 0.05. But two years, nine months. Ooh, two years is a two, nine months is nine twelfths. I could call that two and nine twelfths if I want. I can call that two times 12 is 24 plus nine. I can call it 33 twelfths if I want. And it's going to work. But 33 twelfths, really, people tend to use decimal when they're doing this. So two and nine twelfths is 2.75 in decimal. And of course, use your conversion between fraction decimal skills as you wish, but also use the calculator if you wish. So two and nine twelfths is two and three quarters, which is 2.75. Do it the way that works for you, but we want this. If we're going to have it in a decimal, we want it to be 2.75. A lot of students will see, oh, two years, nine months, and they'll very quickly convert that into 2.75, and they won't want to see these intermediate steps. You do what works. Okay, so that is being multiplied by 0 0.05 and by 100, and even though I'm still keeping the examples easy, I still have nice round numbers like the 100 and the 5%, it's getting to the point where I want to grab my calculator. Where's my calculator? It's right over here. Covered in chalk dust. I don't know how that happens. Well, everything I have is either covered in chalk dust or it's covered in sawdust. My whole life is dust. Okay, 100 times 0 0.05 times 2.75 equals 13.75. But that's the interest, which we have to add to the principal, which is still 100. So we end up with $113.75. And when you compare that to all of the previous examples, it makes perfect sense. $100, 5% interest, two years and nine months is less than three years. So we expect it to be the third year, you're getting less than that $5 you got in the first two years. $5 first year, $5 second year, and then, oh, 375, three quarters of $5. Third year, $113.75, makes perfect sense. Okay. What else can I change? I've done a lot of examples with $100 and 5%. I need to start changing something else. We play around with the time quite a bit now. I think enough for now. So let's change uh, to something else. And I'm going to confess something. I once did a math course in university, but it was really a college level math course, which I was surprised they even allowed me to take in university. I, was, I took it as an option, uh, an elective course. And I did it because I knew I'm good at math. I'll be able to get a high grade and I'll improve my average. And I did so well in that course. I think it was called college algebra. I did so well. I knew everything. I got 100% on the first midterm. It had two midterms. I got 100% on the second midterm. And then on the final exam, I wanted 100%. But there was one question that I just couldn't figure out. And I knew my answer was wrong. And I waited around once I left the exam room for the professor to come by because they come by once or twice to let you ask questions. And when he showed up, I said, I have a question in the hallway. And I told him what I was worried about. And he explained to me that in my interest problem, it was an interest problem. The only question I got wrong on that exam, and I had lots of the steps correct, but I forgot to convert 5% into 0.05. It actually was 5% in that exam question. So I just plugged in a five into the formula instead of 0 0.05. Only mistake, so frustrating. But I guess that's a lesson in remembering slow down. Even when things are easy, slow down. If you rush, you end up making a mistake like that. Okay, so we have this one. Let's do another one. We're finally going to change something besides the time. Okay, $100 at 7%. Seven? Well, of course, interest rates vary. You can get different interest rates depending on whether it's a loan or whether you're the one who's lending the money. Uh, there's all sorts of things that will affect the interest rates you can get, but let's do 7%. Let's see what that looks like. So it's still $100 and it's 7% this time. So I think a lot of the students can predict what's going to happen differently but I'm not going to make it for one year. 
I know I like to keep things really simple, but I think we've already played around with the time a little bit. So I'm going to make it four years. So I'm not giving numbers of months or, you know, something in between four years and five years. I'm not doing that because I want us to focus on the, on the rate and how that looks different in our formula. So the interest is going to be, I don't need to be holding this. The interest is going to be equal to principal, which is a hundred times the rate, which is 0 0.07. That's right. Don't plug in a seven like the Doug from the past. Convert the percent into a decimal, 0 0.07, and then multiply by the time. Can I do this in my head? I think so. 100 times 0 0.07 is going to be equal to 7, and 7 times 4 is 28. So I'm ending up already knowing that the interest is $28, and therefore once I add the principal to it, I have 100 plus 28, and I will have $128 at the end of that four-year period at that interest rate. So we see that the amount I'm earning, we didn't do another example with four years before, but we did one year, two years, two years, nine months. We see, okay, well, something is looking a little different and it's because we have a higher interest rate. So the numbers end up larger because of it. Who would have thought? Of course, we all thought that. When you multiply numbers, if you decide to multiply by a larger number, well, you get a larger answer. That sort of thing tends to happen. So we have done an example with a different interest rate. Let's do something else. Okay, so now we're going to play around with the 7%, but we're going to also have as our time, this time, one year and six months, which is 18 months or one and a half years or 1.5 years. So not that big a curveball to throw at you. We have 100 principal times 0 0.07 times 1.5. Can I still do this in my head? 100 times 0 0.07 is equal to seven, and seven times 1.5, seven times one is seven, and seven times 0.5 is 3.5. Yeah, that's going to be 10.5. 100 times 0 0.07, that's 7, so I'm going to, yes. But of course, 10.5 is what we would normally refer to as $10.50 when it's money. And then when we add the, princi the principal of the 100, we end up with $110.50. This formula is fun and easy to use. I know the students think it's easy, and that's good. But use it a lot. Do a lot of examples like I'm doing now. I've only used 18 minutes of my time so far. That's pretty good because I've already done six examples. I like that. Lots of examples helps. Now, we haven't been playing around with different amounts of principal. Well, let's think about how this works. If you get a better interest rate, then you will earn more interest. If you invest for a longer time, you will earn more interest. It stands to reason that if you have a larger principal, you will earn more interest. Let's make sure by doing another example where we use something besides $100 for a change. Erasing all this stuff. How about $600? Let's start by investing $600. And then the interest rate, this time I'm going to put the interest rate back to 5%. But the amount of time is going to be five years. Wow, five years. That's the longest number of years that we've had in any of our examples. So the interest rate is going to be equal to 600 times 0 0.05 times 5. Hmm. There are different ways of doing this in our heads if we're doing it in our heads. But we grab the calculator and make sure. 0 0.05 times 5 is going to be 0 0.25, which is a quarter. 0.25 times 600 is going to be a quarter of 600. A quarter of 600 is 150. I think I'm going to get 150. But I'll grab my calculator and I'll make sure, because I've learned my lesson. 600 times 0.05 times 5 equals, yes, 150. Add that to the principle of 600. And we now are talking about having $750. So yes, of course it makes sense that if you increase any of these numbers, you can increase the answer because we're multiplying.
If you invest more, you earn more. I don't even have notes of this. If you have a higher rate, you earn more. If you invest for longer, you earn more. Why did we get so much? Because we invested more at 600, not 100. The rate, ah, that's the same old 5% in most of my examples, but we invested it for longer, five years, that's our longest one. And then the students have to be saying, okay, something wrong with this picture. This teacher keeps talking about making money. The teacher keeps talking about interest that involves us investing and making money, but I've heard interest being talked about in a different way that doesn't sound quite as cheerful like when you have to borrow money. So is it all going to be a whole bunch of new stuff we have to learn if we're borrowing the money instead of investing the money? No. Let's think of it this way. If you borrow money, it's the same thing as when you invest money. It's just the roles have been reversed. If I borrow money, now it's whoever I'm borrowing it from who's earning that interest. So the formula is the same. Do I need a new formula? No. I use the same formula for borrowing money as I do for investing money. Let's say we talked about an example where, okay, I'm borrowing $600 at 5% for five years. What does that mean? It means at the end of the five years, I owe $750. No, it doesn't sound like quite, so, quite such good news, but if I did something useful with the money I borrowed, hopefully it is good news. But the way it works, whether you're the lender or the borrower, involves the same formula. So I don't have to teach you all sorts of new stuff for the questions about borrowing money instead of investing money. That's good. Okay, what is next in my notes? Yeah, my next example was to do what I just said out loud. So I'm not going to do it again. So this example is useful because it applied to an investing situation, but it also applied to a borrowing situation. That page is done. I have three pages. First page is done. After 22 minutes, time-wise, I think I'm doing well. Okay, let's, while I'm preparing the next part of the lesson, Let's remember that we should all stretch and stand up out of our seats every now and then while we're learning math. And especially if we're breathing in a lot of chalk dust, it really doesn't hurt to have a sip of water. Fizzy water this time. Blueberry pomegranate. And yes, of course, I see these Valentine's treats. They're still right there on this table right in front of me. And I'm not grabbing at them and eating them because they're for someone else. Okay, what should I do next? Oh, yes, compound interest. Comma, that thing. Okay. Hmm. How am I going to do this? I'm going to rewrite this example over here because I want it to still be sitting there. So, $600, 5%. Five years, I'll write that soon. The I equals 600 0.05 times 5, which is 150, plus the principal of 600 equals $750. So that allows me to erase a whole bunch of this and make some room so we can do a compound interest problem. This was five years. Okay, so my first compound interest problem, we're going to, I'll put a little line, I guess. What if it's compound interest? What's compound interest? Why is this different? Why are there two of them? Because the problem with what we've been doing, if you're the investor, you would see it as a problem, is at the end of the first year, I made $5 per hundred, so I made, I made $30. I'm sort of starting to do calculations in my head because I'm so used to the formula. At the end of the first year, I made $30. And then that happened five times. $30 each of the five years, which was a total of $150. I end up with $750. But wait, that $30 I earned that first year, why don't I earn interest on that? If I haven't taken the $30 away, if 
from whoever I loaned it to, then it's still sitting there. Why is only the original $600 earning the interest? Why isn't the $30 I made at the end of the first year also earning interest for me? That's the idea of compound interest. Sometimes we want to arrange it so that as we earn money with our interest, that money also sits on top of the principal and also earns interest. And it ends up being a better investment. You should end up with more money if you do it that way. And this formula allows us to calculate that. So what we're going to do is the same situation. $600, 5% interest, five years. Boy, we're getting a lot of mileage out of this example. But we're applying it to the compound interest formula so that we can compare. If you get simple interest, fine, you get $150, you end up with $750 in total at the end of the five years. What if you have compound interest? Okay, there's a lot of what if because a few things now change. A, what's A? A is the final amount. Same thing that I meant when I put A here. So this thing where we had to do this little extra step at the end to figure out the final amount, adding the principal to the interest, this formula just does that for us so we don't have that extra step. We will get the final amount if we apply this formula. P is the same, it's still principal. R is the same, it's still the interest rate. But now we're, the R is in a bracket being added to a one. Okay. When we think about how percentage problems work, sometimes we might not be too surprised to see that. And then we have an exponent. The T, the time, is an exponent. It's kind of cool. I like this formula. It was not in, in the old story of Doug losing marks on the exam. It was not simple interest where I made the mistake. It was compound interest. I put 5 instead of 0.05 in this formula. <sighs> okay. But I still have regrets. Okay. Let's do this formula. The P is 600. And then we have 1 plus the rate. And of course we need a decimal. So it's 1 plus 0 0.05. And then we're bringing it to the exponent 5. hope I wrote that largely enough. Now we need to simplify inside this bracket before we try to apply the exponent. But 1 plus 0.05 is not very difficult to do, and a lot of students will skip straight into this. They'll write the formula the way I'm about to write it, as if it's their first step. But I'm not going to rush the steps when I am introducing a new formula to students for the first time. So 1 plus 0.05 is indeed going to be 1.05. And then you have to respect the order of operations. PEDMAS or PEMDAS or BEDMAS or ben, BEMDAS, whichever one you use depending on where you learn. The order of operations is the same regardless of whether we use P's or B's or whether we put the D before the M or the M before the D. We still have the same order of operations. The rules don't change. The memory aid word changes. And the rules are the E for exponent happens before the M for multiplication. So we do not do 600 times 1.05 and then apply the exponent to the answer. No, we apply the exponent of five to the 1.05. And that requires us to use a new key in our calculator. A lot of students that I meet and teach never really had to use this key in their calculator how do you bring some number to the power of five with a calculator? Well, it's not a very difficult key to use. It's the y to the x key, or well, at least on this calculator, it's called y to the x. So I'll draw in it. It looks like a little rectangle. It's too small for me to show you really. Yeah, it would be hard. And there's chalk dust all over it. It looks on my calculator like this. y to the power of x. So it allows you to put in a number and then apply any exponent you want. It's five this time. But that's because it's five years this time. What if it were 12 years? What if it were seven years? We want to be able to have something flexible. Well, this key in the calculator is flexible. It may look a little different. The labeling of it on the calculator might be different, but in any science calculator, scientific calculator, you will have one. You will have a key that does this. So just get used to what the keys look like on your calculator, and then we move on. How do we do this? We type in 1.05 on just in the habit of always pressing on at the beginning, 1.05, then I'm hitting y to the x, and then I'm hitting five. M equals, oh, and it's a long decimal, so I have to round. Is that going to change my answer? Not so much, we'll see, I'll talk about that. So 1.27628156, okay, 
I don't want to run, I don't want to type all of that or write all of that onto my chalkboard. So the 600 is not changed. Remember, we're going to multiply later. But the answer to 1.05 to the 5, 1.27628, I think it's good enough to go to, to round to the nearest hundred. So that uh, with 1.276 means I want to put 1.28. Now, of course, the magic is that sort of changes my answer a little bit. But the 1.276, the, the exact value is still sitting in the calculator. So all I have left to do is multiply it by 600. I may as well let it still be sitting in there. So even though I only wrote 1.28, my, my value to the nearest hundredth on the chalkboard or on a piece of paper, I can still use the correct real value, the exact value, when I multiply times 600 equals. The dog's moving around. I don't know why. It's not supper time. 765, and because we get the final amount with this formula, I can just go ahead and give my final answer now. I'm putting my dollar sign, $765, and then I have to round. It's 77 cents with rounding. So this is rounded very slightly with seven, six, eight, nine, etc. I write it to 77 because, of course, rounded in the nearest hundredth makes sense with money. So this is as exact as it's going to be if it's calculated by, say, bank, banking software. But I didn't use 1.28. So if you try to do this, if you multiply 600 by 1.28, you'll get a slightly different answer because you're using the rounded version, 1.28. I didn't. I let the memory of the calculator keep the real exact decimal value and multiplied that by 600, and I get an answer which is as exact as it can be. $765.77 is how much I have at the end of five years if I invest $600 at 5%. Oh yeah, we have just done the same problem with simple interest, but we got $750. $765.77 is more than $750, and we should have expected that. Because why? Why did it end up being more? It's $15.77 more. Why? Because the interest was compounded, which means that every time some interest was earned, it was added to the principal, and then the calculation was adjusted so that you earn interest not only on the principal, but also on the interest that you had earned. Kind of hard to say that. But it works, the formula works, and I think the students will understand, even if I was clumsy in saying it. How am I doing for time? Oh, I'm doing quite well for time, that's good. So we see a comparison of compound interest versus simple interest. Most of the time, I find myself using this, that a lot of situations that involve borrowing money or lending money, or investing money, the interest is compound. So you end up using this formula, and that means that you make a little bit more money. You might think, okay, it's only $15.77 more. Is that really worth it? Well, the amount of money you make is very dependent on these values. So it can make a really big difference, but it depends on how much you invest, what's your principal. What your interest rate is, not always 5%, you can maybe get a better interest rate when you invest money. And how long you invest for it. You can invest money for longer. So all of these things can make that value end up bigger. And we need to do some examples to illustrate that. So what's my next example? I want to try a very similar example. I like doing similar examples. And I'll do simple and comp compound together again. But I'm going to change the interest rate. Yes. What if we had, say, 9% interest? Is it possible to invest at 9%? Well, yes. So let's calculate what it looks like. I need to erase. Is it still 600? Yes, it is. So I'm keeping everything. And I'll even put that, keep that little drawing of a button on my calculator there. I'll keep everything, but I'm changing the 5% to 9% for both, simple and compound. So let's do that for both. 9% interest, 9% interest. 
Okay, I equals 600, we're getting good at this, aren't we? Times 0 0.0, point, point, show the decimal, 09 times 5. So I want to try to do this in my head. Now, I'm going to get the calculator. Learned my lesson. 600 times 0 0.09 times 5 equals 270. That's so big as a wait. I have to add the principal. So eight hundred and seventy dollars here equals eight hundred and seventy dollars, and it just happens to not have any pennies. Just keep the zeros. Move that. I was not respecting my squiggly line, was I? Okay. Now let's do the compound interest version of the same thing. A equals 600 times 1 plus 0 0.09. Yes, I want to show this step, but people often will skip to the next step. Times 5, it's still 5 years. So the only thing that's changed is the interest rate. Equals 600 times 1.09. Oh, yeah, I had to make a mistake, didn't I? I was really hoping that I could manage to avoid that sort of mistake. Last thing you want to do is make mistakes when you're when students are just starting to get the idea and then they get all confused because the teacher put the five as a multiplication instead of an exponent. No, that is an exponent. Okay, still have to apply the exponent. I'm going to go into my trusty y to the x key for that. 1.09 y to the x, five equals. Where's my decimal? 1.54. Again, I'm rounding to the nearest hundred. Hundredths. And I'm respecting the order of operations. So 1.54, but I'm using the exact version that's sitting in here. Times 600 equals. 923. And rounding to the nearest hundredth, to the nearest penny. 17. Okay, it's starting to look like it, got, it is more of a big deal. Remember the previous example, there was only $15 and something difference, and this time it's $53 and something difference. 9% makes a difference. Hmm. Next one. What do I have as my next example? What if I invest it for longer? I'm going to keep the 9%, but I'm going to invest for longer than five years, and we'll see what that looks like. And again, I'm going to do both simple and compound and compare them. I like doing that. So, erase, 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 erase. We're going to do the $600 again at 9% for 20 years. Fine for time. I ran out of chalk again though. Where's my third chalk holder? How long is the piece of chalk that's in here? Oh, not bad. Not bad. That might last till the end of the lesson. Okay, I won't hold my breath. All right. Simple interest. I equals 600 times 0 0.09 times 20. Calculator. 600 times 0 0.09 times 20, 1,080. And that's pretty impressive. Especially when we realize we still have to add the principal. Ah. Plus 600 equals 1,680. $1,680 dollars. Did I do that one? Oh, yes, I did have it on my page as well. Let's do the compound interest version of this one. You can see that increasing that time really starts making you think, I'm making some money here. It is a long time to wait, but uh, it's not little tiny bits of money. A equals 600 times one, and I'm just writing my one like this, but I'm still showing the one plus 0 0.09 because I want to. 
to the power of the time, which is not 5 anymore, it's 20. What happens when you use that y to the x key with a number as big as 20 as the exponent? Hmm. Well, we're about to find out, aren't we? 600 times 1.09 to the 20. 1.09 to the 20. 1.09. Y to the x, 20 equals 5.6. Does it sound like it's not a big deal? Maybe it doesn't sound like such a big deal, 5.6. Eh. But I still have to multiply. And it's not 5.6, of course. It's one of those decimals that goes on forever. But I'm rounding to the nearest hundredth, and it's going to be 5.6. Oh, that happens sometimes with rounding. I still have to multiply by 600. Oh, 3,362 dollars and 65 cents. Remember, I did not multiply 600 by 5.60. Oh, I multiplied the 600 by 5.6 and there was a bunch of other numbers. So if your answer is slightly different than mine, that can be why. This is as exact as I can get it. I still had to round, but it's money. So I rounded to the nearest hundredth. No one is bothered when you round money to the nearest hundredth. It's way money is done. $3,362.65 instead of $1,680. Hmm. So compound interest sounds like it's a good idea if you're the one who's investing the money. And of course, if you're borrowing money instead, the formulas are still the same. If you're going to loan your money, to someone, whether you're a business, a bank, or an individual, compound interest can allow you to do some quite interesting things with that money. $3,362.65 instead of $1,680. So it made a big difference. What's happened? We've got gotten up to a fairly large principal of $600. We're not using $100 as an example anymore. We have been sticking with $600 for a while. But the 9%, well, the, the improved interest rate, the larger interest rate makes a difference, but so does the larger number of years. So when you make several things larger, the money starts to really grow and you can see how it really works and you can see that, yes, it is worth it. The difference does matter. Okay, what's my next example? Hmm. Look at the time I have. Let's think if there are any what if questions I haven't asked and answered yet. And of course we know we can put some years and months, we can turn 20 into some sort of uh, combination of years and months. It could be 20 and a half years, 20.5, and the y to the x key will still work. You can type in, you don't have to type in whole numbers as that little x, the exponent. You can type in anything that goes into the calculator, that will work. Hmm. Need a sip of this. Okay. <clears throat> I decided to calculate a big amount of money. Like when someone buys a house and they have to borrow the money. Okay, I'm going to do that. And I'm not going to do simple interest anymore. I'm going to leave the formula here, this little extra formula as well. But now I'm going to go into compound interest because an awful lot of the real life situations where we calculate this sort of thing, it is compound interest. So I find I use that formula more often. What if you had to borrow $360,000? That's a lot of money, but if you're doing something like buying a house, you might end up uh, getting involved in much larger amounts of money. And what type of interest rate? The interest rates fluctuate for buying houses. Sometimes the interest rate is high, and because you're the one who's borrowing the money, you don't want it to be high. Sometimes it's low, and people sort of try to they, they time their investments, and they look at things like that. What if we were getting an interest rate of 4.7%? And yes, that can be a decimal as well. In fact, when you look at interest rates, you're not going to see 
clean whole numbers like 5% and 6% that often, you get decimal percentages for interest rates. And how long? A very common amount of time to borrow money to buy a house is 25 years. But it doesn't have to be. It is possible to borrow money to buy a house for a shorter amounts of times or longer. 25 years is a fairly common one, I believe. Let us figure out compound interest that works with these numbers. So A equals P, which is 360,000 times one plus 4.7%. I think I should do that off to the side. 4.7, we are converting it by moving, jumping the decimal two places to the left, so that's going to be 0 0.047. Have to be careful, when we now we have a, a decimal in there, it can make us confused and make us make a mistake, so don't make a mistake with that. So we have 1 plus 0 0.047, and the power of 25. 25 years. Okay. It always looks so much easier when you convert it like this. And then to the 25. Okay, I need that key in my calculator to do this. 1.047 y to the x 25 equals 3.15 rounded to the nearest hundredth Three point one five, and I'm multiplying, but not three point one five. I'm multiplying this number that's in the memory times three hundred and sixty thousand. Ooh, one million. Yeah, one million one hundred and thirty-four thousand nine hundred and thirty-one dollars and twenty-two cents. Hmm. So if I wanted to borrow $360,000 so I could buy a house, and that was the interest rate I could get, and I'm borrowing it for this long, I end up paying $1.134 million, or $1,134,931 for the house. But then I only needed to borrow, is it a $360,000 house? Maybe, if I had to borrow all the money. But of course, if I paid a down payment on the house, then maybe the house cost more than 360000 But I'm not going to include the down payment in this calculation because I don't borrow the down payment. The down payment is money I already paid. But am I expected to, the, over the next 25 years, to somehow come up with $1.134 million? Ah, I don't know if I can do that. That's how I would feel. But the good news is, of course, when you get a mortgage, which is when you borrow money to buy a house, you don't wait until the 25 years is over to start paying it off. You start paying it off right away. And as you're paying it off, what you're doing is you are decreasing the principal. So the amount that you have borrowed keeps on getting smaller because you keep on paying some of it back. And in the end, you do not end up paying this much money after 25 years. By the end of the 25 years, you have paid more than 360000 because they did charge you interest. It's going to be more. But it's not going to be that much more. So paying back a loan starting right away, well, that's one of the reasons people do that. They make payments on their loans so that they don't end up mm, with a number like that that they have to pay back. Let's do a couple more examples. I have time for a couple more. I'm trying to think of a good what if question to ask though. Hmm. Oh, I, I think I'm gonna do, I'm going to do that type of example where you compare three things, compound interest, simple interest, and then the coffee can. So you know where I'm getting this idea from, the coffee can. Or, you know, what other place do people save money when they don't bring it to a bank or invest it when they just keep it in a little hiding place, a piggy bank. Okay, let's do that. Let's do a piggy bank example. So I'm calling it the piggy bank and not the coffee can. Erasing this whole thing. Okay, so piggy bank, a 
I'll put piggy bank right in the middle. I just like saying the phrase piggy bank. I'll draw a piggy bank. I may regret doing this. I'm not necessarily that good at drawing things. Okay, so that doesn't look like a pig until I do this. And then it looks like a pig. Okay, and now I have to get the pig's head there. And if I make the pig's nose look like a pig's nose, I'll get away with this and give him an eye. Okay, and he needs one of those for us to put the money into. But I don't want to do this calculation with a small amount of money that you would just have in coins. So we will we will make this slot on piggy bank's back longer so that folded up bills will fit into it. And let's compare. Hmm. We get a gift. It's a special occasion and we get a bigger gift of money than usual from some beloved older relative. Let's say we get uh, $125. Okay. $125 is going to be our amount. And the interest rate, well, if the piggy bank, there's no interest rate. So the piggy bank, well, let's see how that works out. But the interest rate is going to be, whether it's simple interest or compound interest, the interest rate is going to be 8, why did I put a dollar sign? 8%. Yes, sometimes you can get 8%. And the amount of time. Hmm. 32 years. No, 32 and a half years. 32.5 years. Okay, I didn't really leave room for my simple interest calculation. I'm going to do it here. That is I equals 125 times 0 0.08, yes, Doug, remember to convert it into a decimal, thank you, times 32.5. Saying 32 years and six months just made it seem more complicated than it really was when you think about it. Okay, equals, I need my calculator. How am I doing for time? This is going to be just right. 125 times 0.08 times 32.5 equals button push accident okay starting over one two five times 0 0.08 times 32.5 i think it's either i've made a mistake with the calculator i might have to do this pencil and paper because i'm not trusting my calculator's answer Ooh, okay, I'm, I'm stepping off camera, and I know that's wrong, but I'm going to go onto the calculator on the computer. C A L C. There it is, calculator. And it even has. Does it have the Y to the X key? I hope so, because I'm not so sure what's going on with this. Okay, 125. One, two, five. It's so much faster with this type of calculator times 0 0.08 0 0.08 times 32.5 equals it was correct I just didn't trust the answer because it happens to be exactly 325 and I was expecting decimals I don't know I guess I ooh Eight times. The dog just got up and left. You're not allowed to leave. Come here. I'm going to ignore her. Eight times 125 is a thousand. Yes. Okay. Just the coincidence of using an eight and a 125. It ended up giving a cleaner answer than I expected. I tricked myself into thinking my calculator was not working. I am going to add to that the principal, though. The principal is 125. So my total is going to be $450. Is that fitting in the video rectangle? Yes. Okay, make sure that I'm 25. 
32. The reason it's so big is that just again, I'm trying to question it. Really? It's because 32.5 years is a long time. Okay, up, up. Lie down. She heard noise from upstairs, that's why. Okay, the piggy bank. I'm going to do the piggy bank next because it's simple. All I can do, all I have to do is I take the $125 and it's in here, right? And it's still $125. So this was a definitely a good idea. Instead of keeping that piggy bank with $125 in it for 32 and a half years and having $125, if you were simply uh, invested at 8% simple interest, you end up with $450. That really sounds worth it. Let's do this one though. A equals 125 times one plus 0 0.08 to the power of 32.5. Sounds like it's going to be complicated and then it ends up not being very complicated. Equals 125 times 1.08, that's an eight, to the power of 32.5. It's a good thing my calculator is working because I need that y to the x key now. 1.08 y to the x, 32.5 equals 12.1, Remember, we had a five and we were wondering, that doesn't seem like a big deal. And then it was a big deal, 12. 12.197, so it's 12.20. But I'm using the memory of the calculator to use the real value of multiply by 125. 1,000, $1,524. Oh, this is interesting, 69 cents rounded. That's pretty decent. $125 turned into $1,524.69. That is decent. That's way better than the simple interest. Piggy bank, you know, we all love piggy banks, but I'm starting to look at them differently and say, you know what? You've been tricking me all these years into thinking you're a good idea, but now I'm learning some math that's telling me about other ideas that are better. So a piggy bank, maybe I should just keep, I don't know, business cards in it or something like that. Maybe a piggy bank is a good thing to use to keep these little cinnamon hearts. I wonder if they'll fit into the little slot in the piggy bank. Okay, that is my last example. And I'm pretty much at the end of my time. So I did okay, thanks to the piggy bank. What's missing from the piggy bank? And I realize this now is the other ear. Now it looks like a, uh, maybe this. Now it looks like a piggy bank, a happy piggy bank. I'm gonna make its eyebrow oh, look happy. Hmm. I think I've done enough with the piggy bank. I've done enough with this lesson. This has been fun. It's always fun. Thank you very much for being with me for this lesson. I hope that you are no longer afraid to invest your money and to uh, check the calculations to make sure that everything is going okay with your money. Because really this type of math is not that difficult. These formulas are very powerful and very useful. I'm going to say goodbye, but I'm going to let the dog also say goodbye before I turn off the button on the camera. You can't hear it, but I can hear because she's, I'm hearing this noise like stop, 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 stop. It's her tail. She knows it's supper time. Okay. Little shaggy dog who is not going to be very shaggy the next time we see her. Look at the camera. The camera's right here. Here, look at my fingers. She looks at my mouth instead of my fingers. There, she has no idea you're here. There are thousands of you and you're in the future and she has no idea you're here. Anyway, that's the way it is with dogs. Thank you very much and I will see you next time.